Hello curious minds, welcome to TRAPPIST-1b, a scorching hot exoplanet so close to its star, yet it might hold clues to an alien atmosphere, but is everything as it seems, let's uncover the truth. Before we dive into TRAPPIST-1b itself, let's take a step back and explore its incredible home, the TRAPPIST-1 system. The TRAPPIST-1 system was discovered in 2016 by a team led by Michael Gillon, a Belgian astronomer at the University of Liège, their discovery came from observations made at the La Silla Observatory in Chile using the TRAPPIST telescope. The breakthrough came when astronomers noticed anomalies in the light curves measured by the telescope in 2015. These light curves revealed periodic dips in the star's brightness, signaling that something was passing in front of it. After studying the data, scientists realized these dimming events were caused by planets orbiting the star, and thus, the TRAPPIST-1 system was born. Later in 2017, the discovery was confirmed by NASA's Spitzer Space Telescope, cementing TRAPPIST-1 as a system that would soon captivate scientists around the world. At the center of the system lies TRAPPIST-1, an ultra-cool red dwarf star. It's much smaller and cooler than our Sun, only about 9% of the Sun's mass and just slightly larger than Jupiter. This star is so dim that even its closest planets receive only a fraction of the light and heat that we get from the Sun. But here's the catch. Because TRAPPIST-1 is so small and cool, its planets orbit incredibly close to it while still remaining in a potentially habitable range. This system is home to seven rocky planets, creatively named TRAPPIST-1b through TRAPPIST-1h, in order of their distance from the star. What's remarkable is that all seven planets are roughly Earth-sized, and some may even have the right conditions to host liquid water. What makes TRAPPIST-1 so unique is its compact nature. All seven planets orbit closer to their star than Mercury orbits our Sun, if you were standing on one of these planets, you could likely see the neighboring planets as large as the moon appears from Earth. This system provides a rare opportunity for scientists to study multiple Earth-sized planets in a single system and investigate how different conditions affect their atmospheres and geology. Now that we've explored the TRAPPIST-1 system, let's zoom in on TRAPPIST-1b and uncover the exciting possibilities it might hold. Because the James Webb Space Telescope has thrown a curveball at everything we thought we knew about this exoplanet, for years scientists assumed that TRAPPIST-1b was a rocky planet without an atmosphere, dark, desolate and shaped by billions of years of cosmic bombardment from radiation and meteorites. But recent measurements with JWST are challenging that notion. The data suggests that TRAPPIST-1b's surface isn't weathered or worn down by radiation or impacts the way we expected. Astronomer Jeroen Bauman from the Max Planck Institute for Astronomy explains, the idea of a rocky planet with a heavily weathered surface without an atmosphere is inconsistent with the current measurements. Therefore we think the planet is covered with relatively unchanged material. What does this mean? It could suggest that the surface is much younger than we thought, about 1000 years old, far less than the planet's estimated age of several billion years. So what could explain this young smooth surface? One possibility is extreme volcanism or plate tectonics, geological activity that could constantly refresh the surface. TRAPPIST-1b is large enough that its interior may still retain residual heat from its formation, much like Earth. And just like Jupiter's moon Io, the tidal effects of its central star and the other planets could generate internal friction, creating heat. Another theory that's been gaining traction is the possibility of TRAPPIST-1b having a thick atmosphere, potentially rich in carbon dioxide. This idea is further supported by the presence of haze in the upper atmosphere, a layer made of hydrocarbon compounds or what we might call smog. Unlike the barren, atmosphereless image we once had of TRAPPIST-1b, this new idea suggests that the planet could indeed have a thick, hazy atmosphere. The haze could trap heat and warm the upper layers, creating a greenhouse effect. Despite the exciting possibilities, there's still a major challenge. Detecting and studying the atmospheres of rocky exoplanets is incredibly difficult. TRAPPIST-1b's atmosphere, if it even has one, is likely very thin, making it tough to measure. The current study used JWST to observe the planet at two specific infrared wavelengths, 12.8 and 15 micrometers, but it didn't find the expected dimming that would indicate an atmosphere. So, while we don't have all the answers yet, the latest findings about TRAPPIST-1b show that this planet is more complex than we once thought. While the theories surrounding TRAPPIST-1b are exciting, we have to take a step back and ground ourselves in reality. The truth is, much of what we've discussed is still based on observations, models, and educated guesses. So what do we actually know for sure about TRAPPIST-1b? The first thing we need to acknowledge is that, while we've gathered some important data about TRAPPIST-1b, there are still a lot of unknowns. For example, we can only make guesses about its atmosphere, surface conditions, and geological activity based on indirect evidence. 
We know its size and orbit fairly well thanks to the data collected by telescopes like TRAPPIST and Spitzer, but many of the characteristics, such as its atmosphere, surface composition and whether it has volcanic activity, remain speculative. To truly understand what's happening on TRAPPIST-1b, we need more observations. Right now, we're relying on telescopes and models to paint a picture of what this planet might look like. One of the key instruments is the James Webb Space Telescope. By analyzing the planet's atmosphere in more detail, we might be able to confirm if it has the right conditions to support a thick atmosphere, or if it's as barren as we expect. But studying a planet like TRAPPIST-1b comes with some serious challenges. For one, it's extremely close to its star, which means its light is incredibly bright and can make it difficult to gather precise data on its atmosphere. The high temperatures and intense radiation from TRAPPIST-1 also complicate things. This is why observations can be tricky. Right now, we have to rely on indirect methods to infer details about its composition and atmosphere. So, while scientists have proposed some fascinating theories, we must remember that they're just that, theories. For example, the possibility of volcanic activity or a runaway greenhouse effect on TRAPPIST-1b sounds compelling, but without concrete evidence, we can't say for sure. At this point, everything about its environment remains up for debate. For instance, the idea that there's an atmosphere or water is based on models and simulations, not direct observations. We simply don't have the evidence to confirm it yet. So what exactly makes JWST so powerful? The telescope is equipped with four main instruments, each designed to gather different kinds of data that will help us unlock the mysteries of TRAPPIST-1b and beyond. First and foremost, the NIRCAM or near-infrared camera is designed to capture sharp images in the near-infrared spectrum. It's perfect for studying the atmospheres of exoplanets like TRAPPIST-1b, as it can detect the chemical composition of gases in the atmosphere when the planet transits its star. There there's MIRI or mid-infrared instrument. MIRI operates in the mid-infrared part of the spectrum and is especially useful for studying cooler objects like brown dwarfs, distant galaxies, and exoplanets. MIRI can analyze the thermal emissions from TRAPPIST-1b, allowing scientists to understand its temperature, weather systems, and atmospheric features. NARSPEC or Near-Infrared Spectrograph helps JWS to study the chemical makeup of distant objects. For TRAPPIST-1b it will be invaluable in analyzing the planet's atmosphere. By studying how light from its star passes through the atmosphere during a transit, we can learn about the gases present and whether the planet's atmosphere contains water vapor, carbon dioxide, methane, or other important compounds. And finally, the FGS NIRIS or Fine Guidance Sensor slash Near Infrared Imager and Slitless Spectrograph. It's designed to help with precision tracking and high-resolution imaging, which is vital when studying exoplanet atmospheres. It also plays a key role in observing the transits of planets like TRAPPIST-1b and gathering additional data to confirm findings. So, how exactly will JWST help us uncover the secrets of TRAPPIST-1b? Let's break it down. One of the primary goals for studying TRAPPIST-1b with JWST is to analyze its atmosphere if it has one. By studying the way light passes through or reflects off the atmosphere during a transit, we can identify gases like water vapor, carbon dioxide, methane, and others. Using infrared observations, JWST can map the surface temperatures of TRAPPIST-1b. This could help scientists understand whether the planet has extreme temperature differences between the day and night sides, a result of tidal locking, or if there are any signs of volcanic activity or unusual heat sources. If TRAPPIST-1b has any volcanic activity, JWST could help us detect signs of eruptions or the presence of volcanic gases in its atmosphere such as sulfur dioxide. This would give us a better understanding of the planet's geology and its interaction with its star. And finally, by studying TRAPPIST-1b, JWST will provide critical data that can help scientists refine models of what makes a planet habitable. While TRAPPIST-1b might not be habitable, the insights we gain could help us understand what conditions are necessary for life and how different planets can evolve. While the James Webb Space Telescope offers groundbreaking insights into exoplanet atmospheres, there are several other methods that astronomers use to study planets like TRAPPIST-1b. Let's take a look at some of these techniques, each with its own strengths and limitations. As we touched on earlier, transit spectroscopy involves measuring the dimming of a star when a planet passes in front of it. This method is widely used for exoplanet discovery and atmospheric analysis. By studying the starlight that passes through the planet's atmosphere, scientists can determine what gases are present based on how they absorb certain wavelengths of light. The challenge with this technique, especially for systems like TRAPPIST-1, is that the star's activity can interfere with the measurements. This is why JWST's infrared observations are sometimes more reliable for studying exoplanet atmospheres. Another powerful method is secondary eclipse measurements. This involves observing a planet when it passes behind its star or during an eclipse. 
the planet's light is blocked by the star, and astronomers can measure the thermal emission from the planet's night side. By comparing this data to the brightness of the planet when it is illuminated, scientists can determine how heat is distributed across the planet's surface and whether it has an atmosphere. These measurements can be combined with phase curve data, which tracks the changes in brightness as the planet orbits its star. This allows scientists to see how the temperature varies between the planet's day and night sides and offers clues about the presence of an atmosphere. Direct imaging is another exciting method. This technique involves capturing the planet's own light by blocking out the star's light using special instruments called coronagraphs or starshades. This allows astronomers to see planets that are far enough from their stars to be distinguishable from the starlight. Direct imaging is most effective for young, bright exoplanets that are far from their parent stars. While it's still challenging to apply this technique to rocky planets like TRAPPIST-1b, it holds promise for future discoveries. The radial velocity method, or Doppler spectroscopy, detects the wobble of a star caused by the gravitational pull of an orbiting planet. This method helps scientists measure the planet's mass and orbit. While it's not directly used to study a planet's atmosphere, it's a critical tool for determining the planet's size and composition. For systems like TRAPPIST-1, the radial velocity method is helpful in confirming the presence of planets and determining their size, which can then guide atmospheric studies. Lastly, gravitational microlensing is a unique method where the gravitational field of a star or planet acts as a magnifying lens to brighten the light from a distant background star. This technique is sensitive to planets at various distances and can be used to detect exoplanets around distant stars, including those in the TRAPPIST-1 system. While microlensing can't directly study an exoplanet's atmosphere, it helps identify promising candidates for future observations and studies, such as those using JWST or other telescopes. In conclusion, while JWST has revolutionized the way we study exoplanet atmospheres, it's just one tool in a larger arsenal of methods. Each of these techniques brings us one step closer to unraveling the mysteries of distant worlds like TRAPPIST-1b. So, what do you think? Could TRAPPIST-1b surprise us with even more discoveries or do you believe its extreme conditions make it unlikely to hold any surprises? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. If you enjoyed this adventure don't forget to like this video and subscribe for more explorations of distant worlds. And hit that notification bell so you never miss an update on the wonders of our universe. Thanks for watching. Until next time keep looking up.